Hello, this is Faith of Faith and Books, and I'm going to do a tag. And the name of the tag is What Makes Me Pick Up a Book. And I saw this at Bill Ruttenberg's, at the Ruttenberg Library. And I know I saw somebody else's, but I can't remember whose. So I'm going to link to Bill's. And then the um, channel that originated it is called, I believe, The Bookish Bryants. I just subscribed to their channel because uh, it looks good uh, but apparently this is an original one with them so I'll, I'll find that and link to it below as well so this is the what makes me pick up a book tag and no one tag me I'm just doing it uh, let's see so the first question is do you judge a book by its cover not really because when I look for a book I'm either looking for a particular author or a particular title so I'm not just, you know, going through and picking stuff up randomly or a particular subject matter. And I really like old books. I like to thrift, you know, thrift for books. And a lot of times they don't have nice covers or they're old or whatever. But that, it doesn't matter to me, um, it turns out. Now, sometimes there'll be a beautiful cover and that will attract me. So that does happen. But more often than not, it's it's not really a factor. Um Let's see. So question number two is focusing just on the cover. What attracts you to pick it up? So that made me start thinking about covers I do like and covers I find annoying. I think one reason why covers don't figure strongly with me in terms of picking up the book is I more often than not, I don't like the cover. Um, I just don't. I think I must be really picky. Um, the, uh, sometimes I just don't understand why they do what they do on the cover of something. So I just, I just pilfered through my bookshelf back here and I'm just going to show you some examples. For instance, I loved John Mortimer's Rump the Rumpled series. I went through a period where I read tons of them. I think this is the ugliest cover. I mean, this is the guy that played him on the BBC series, but for some reason they've done it in this weird light with this weird filter or whatever, and it's just ugly. I mean, it's not warm and fuzzy uh, at all. I mean, he was a really likable, quirky guy. They could have brought that out. Instead, it just looks kind of, I don't know, <laughs> existential or something like that. It's just weird. I, I just find it unattractive. Um, but I bought it because I love this series. So that's an example of um, what didn't make me pick up the book. I just picked it up because I love this particular series. Um, now this, uh, example, I really, really do like this cover and compared to other editions of, um, Jane Austen books, I really like this set. Now who put this out? Every Man Library. And they all have just this picture of her. This is supposed to be Jane Austen, but it's not, I don't think that's, um, completely reliable. It's just been conjectured that this is Jane Austen, but each one of them has this picture and then just the name and the author's name there. And I think they're quite handsome. I really like this edition. So, I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't pick up Persuasion because of this cover, but if I, ha I have several different editions of, of Persuasion, at least a couple of different um, and this, I would prefer this edition because it's so nice. Also, they've got the nice ribbon. That's another big thing. Um, so, and then, oops, sorry, I'm jiggling this. Um, but sometimes I'll just buy books that I think they're very handsome being plain. I just kind of like them plain, really, because I don't often like the art, the way, the way, the graphic design or whatever. So this I find very handsome, you know, and classic and I don't need anything. I don't need a picture of, of Samuel Johnson or, you know, I don't know, a picture of London in, in the 1700s or something uh, on the cover to make me want to pick that up. Let's see. I was going through more. So I'm going to read this book, Evicted, this month for nonfiction. And I do kind of like this because it, if you know, it's called Evicted and it's the uh, you know, the white spaces that are left when you have to take your pictures down that have been hanging for a while. So I think that's pretty evocative of the title in a very subtle way. And then I like the way they have this little flap. And then inside they have the reviews, the one word, one or two uh, word reviews. So I do think that's kind of a well done cover for this sort of thing. Um, and 
I like this too. This is really simple. Just Tuesdays with Maury. And then nothing, they don't have to have, you know, any pictures or anything. It's, I kind of like that straightforward style. But sometimes I don't. I mean, sometimes I do like a more elaborate cover, like this uh, edition of Little Women. I think that's utterly charming. And it fits with the book, you know. Or over here, I love these editions of C.S. Lewis books. They, they all came out. See, I don't pay attention to publishers the way other people do. Hardcore. Hardcore. Um, but I do love these with the... Uh, with the classic paintings. I do think this is very handsome and well done for C.S. Lewis. Here's an example of a really, really ugly cover. Why? <laughs> Doesn't that make you want to learn about economics? <laughs> yeah, that's what economics is. <laughs> it's this really ugly <laughs> graph. I mean, it just, it, and it, you know, the worldly philosophers, you know, seems like it could be really interesting. And then they put this really ugly, it's just ugly. I don't get it. Or sometimes I think they just don't try hard enough. Like, you know, is that the wine dark sea? It looks like a child's cutout of a... I don't get it. I don't like the color combination or anything. Just not a nice cover. And then I do like these uh, a series of Georgette Hare uh, historical fiction. I think that's a, a good one. An infamous army. This is set during uh, Waterloo. Um, I, I thought that was a handsome cover for that. Anyway, so I guess I'm picky, and I'd prefer my um, my covers plainer rather than trying too hard <laughs> and not making the grade. Um, let's see. And then the rest of the question is: Is it more likely to be the title or subject matter or author? Yes. Or or oh, I, that was my answer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Instead of focusing on the cover, it's about the subject matter or the title that I've been looking for, or the author. I've read something by this author, and I'm curious to see another. I see another book by them, and I'm like, I, I want to try it out. Or I just like old books. I like antique and vintage books. So that alone is enough to make me pick it up. Um, and then question number three is, do you read the synopsis first? And I usually do. Every once in a while, just pick up a book and the subject matter will uh, intrigue me. And then I'll, I'll get right into it. the first paragraph will grab me and I'll just, just dive in. I won't know what I'm getting into. That's usually nonfiction as opposed to fiction. I think I'm more cautious about fiction because I've been burned. Uh, there's so many books that I just don't think are the, worth the time to read and they're kind of depressing um, because they I don't like the author's worldview or something. Um, so, um, so, you know, um, for fiction, I tend to want to know a little bit more about it. And sometimes if I'm reading something that's a little bit hard to read, like, um, I'll do research, like when I was reading Romola, or I'm not sure how you say it, by uh, George Eliot, I did do research on Savernella, Savernello and, um, and you know, that time period, the Renaissance time period, just so I could understand the context that the story was written in. Or with Bleak House, there were so many characters um, that I did go to, like, I think it was Wikipedia or someplace where I could get a list of the characters, just to, just to have them... Uh, in my head. But I do usually want to know a little bit about, especially when I'm about to purchase a book, I want to know a little bit about it. And, you know, I don't have endless bookshelf space, so, you know, I want it has to be worthwhile in order to, to get it and put it on my shelf. Um, let's see. Um, do you have any auto-buy authors? I had never heard this phrase before, auto-buy, where you just automatically buy whatever this particular author puts out. And even in with authors that I absolutely love, I don't do that. I don't, I just don't auto buy at all. Um, I tend to go on um, Jags, but it's usually, it's not because the author just put out a book, it's because there's a series or something that's already been out there and I wanna read the next series. So then I'll, when I'm finished, like the last time I did that, I was reading those books sent uh, set in um, Roman Britain, and they were by Ruth Downey. They were really good. They're, they all had Latin names, like persona non grata, and 
Um, and it was a really good story about this Roman uh, physician for the army who's in England, stationed in England, just when it's kind of falling apart and they're going to withdraw eventually. And he falls in love with a local Druid woman. Um, I guess Druid, is that the right? Anyway, it was, it was a really good uh, series. And so I did like automatically buy the next one. When I was finished, I bought the next one. But they were had all of them. I don't know if she's put out any more. There are five or six, I think. I have to check and see if there's any more. But when I finished reading the last one, there were no more at that time. Maybe she's still writing them. I should, should check that out. But I, I just don't auto buy books at all. Um, let's see, question number five. Are you more likely to pick up a book if it includes specific elements, themes, e.g. LGBTQ plus mental health rep? What does that mean? Disability rep? So it represents somebody? In the, and I would say it would be highly unlikely for me to pick up a book just because of that. I want, I want good writing and good, it seems like it's putting the the cart before the horse. Um, so yeah, uh, no, I don't think I really do that. Now, sometimes I'll be in a mood where I'll want to learn more about something. So maybe if I want to learn more about, you know, Africa, or if I want to learn more about Asia or, you know, a particular time period or something, then I might do that. But I don't, I'm not as specific as that. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think it's the usual way I think when I'm buying books. Um, do you read a book that has generally negative reviews just to form your own opinion of it? So I don't I don't think so, but maybe occasionally. It depends on who's reviewing it. <laughs> if if someone's reviewing it who I really don't trust their take on that particular thing, I might just think, okay, if he says, he or she says it's bad, it might be worth looking into because it means that it would be something that would appeal to me. But that's not usually the case. I'm not a big review reader. I used to be. Um, I used to do it a lot more than I do now. Um, I don't know how I, how I discern about books. I mean, this last year it's been, you know, really listening to book two. Um, I really like Kate Howe's channel because I think she has a lot of the same reading tastes as I do. Um, and so when she lists book, I think, oh, maybe I'll look into that because uh, yeah, I, I, um, I might really enjoy that. Um, yeah, I, don't, I have to think about that one a little bit more. I, don't, I, I used to be into reading book reviews and I've stopped. So uh, I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, uh, question number seven is, do you ever buy a book just because another booktuber or book blogger has reviewed it or talked about it a lot? I don't, um, what did I say? I mean, I don't think so because I've only been on for a year now. Um, but, and I did watch some book, booktube beforehand, but it was mostly like Victober stuff or it was already books that I knew about and I just wanted to hear people talk about something I already loved. But um, I did read like more Louisa May Alcott this year because of the um, Louisa May 2020 read along. Um, and so that was definitely, I definitely expanded my, my you know, <laughs> um, books read about by Alcott because of that. Uh, so that does happen or like I, I um, um, it's not buying a book. Well, no, I did. Did I buy any? I, I wound up not buying them because you can get them all on Kindle uh, for free or maybe like 99 cents or something like that. So no, I don't think I've really done that. I don't think so. Not yet anyway. It's probably in the works. It's probably going to happen. For instance, uh, Kate Howe talked about this book called Waterfall of the Stars. I really want to read it. Um, but I'm waiting until the new year because I'm still doing a year of reading one's own. Uh, so I'm still trying to work through books that are just on my shelf and I'm not buying. That's the other thing is I haven't really bought books. I mean, I bought some, but I haven't bought very many and I haven't gone like thrift shopping for them. Um, secondhand book stores shopping uh, because of COVID, but also because I was trying to read more of the books on my own shelf already. So, all right. And the final question is, is there anyone whose book recommend 
recommendations you generally always trust. Wait, did I already? Oh, okay. I don't, let's see. Um, I think I'm too new <laughs> to BookTube. Uh, to say that, like I mentioned before, though, Kate Howe's uh, list always intrigued me because I think we're, we kind of line up with the same taste. And I have heard a couple of people, uh, Brian at Bookish and, um, oh, what's his name? Mark Nash have talked about Octavia Butler's uh, book Kindred, and I, I really am interested in reading that. Even though I don't typically like science fiction, it just sounds really, really interesting and, and Everyone seems to rave about it, so I, I, mean, I do want to read that. So that's the only concrete example I think I can give um, right now. Hmm. All right, oh my goodness, 15 minutes. Gosh, I can babble. Anyway, so that is my tag, and I'm just going to tag anybody. If you want to do this, I will put the questions below, and um, feel free, have fun. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.